Matai Schindler is one of the greatest footballers of all time, a player who revolutionized how the game is seen and thought of. He was a star in Austria throughout the 1930s and has the nickname the pre-war Pele. In Austria, and Vienna especially, football was seen as a sport of creativity and intelligence rather than tough, brutal, aggressive play, like in England. Before the war, Vienna was a city with a very unique culture. Instead of pubs, there were coffee houses. As stated by the great writer Jonathan Wilson, people would read the newspapers there, pick up mail and laundry, play cards and chess, while intellectuals and their acolytes would discuss the great affairs of the day, art, literature, drama, and increasingly football. Schindler was a favorite of both these men and the working class. He was so well thought of that famous critic Alfred Pogar said of him, he would play football as a grandmaster plays chess, always choosing the most promising of all possibilities. The Nazis famously used sport as a propaganda tool in the 1936 Olympics and through soccer. They felt sports were a fantastic way to demonstrate their superiority, but in football, they were not especially good. When the Nazis invaded Vienna, they immediately disbanded Jewish sports clubs, forced Jew clubs to release Jewish players, and fired Jewish officials. People were told to exclude the Jewish people from society. Many Austrians were content with this. Some were even happy. Sindelar, who was an advocate for the Social Democratic Party, was less than thrilled. When the president of FK Austria Wien, Dr. Michai Schwartz, was fired, Sindelar remained in contact with him. He famously told him, They have forbidden us to talk to you, but I will always speak to you. Through, though Schindler's most memorable stand-up against Nazi oppression came on April 3, 1938. A match was played between Germany and Austria in a friendly match to signify the combining of the two nations to make Ostmark. Nazi officials told both teams to maintain a low-scoring draw. This was to ensure that neither side feel a sense of nationalistic pride before the merge. Throughout the match, Schindler missed a series of chances by inches, almost a message that he can score whenever he wants. When the 70th minute or so began, his demeanor changed. Schindler would score and give Austria a win. To celebrate, he ran up to the Nazis' official box and did a dance mocking them. Famous writer Robin Stummer described the occasion as Vienna's first and last rally against the Nazis. After the match, Schindler constantly declined the Nazis' calls to join the national squad. He even declined when the Nazis' head of sport, Hans von Schammer, asked him. He told them he retired from football, although he was still only 34. Although being very wealthy, Schindler bought a small cafe from a Jewish man. Even though at this time Vienna legally seized property from Jewish people, Schindler kept public and close friendships towards many Jewish people. To buy the cafe, Schindler not only bought the cafe at full price in cash, but also stopped the locals from picking it up at a mere percentage of its true worth. His actions alerted the attention of the Gestapo, and they kept close eye on his cafe. The secret police of Nazi Germany noted in a report how 70% of customers were Jewish and how Schindler was not sympathetic to the party. Less than a year later from the legendary goal against Germany, Schindler was found dead in his apartment along with his girlfriend. Although it was, it was reported the cause was carbon monoxide poisoning from a faulty heater, the Nazis shut down the investigation before full conclusions were met. Matthias Schindler is the one bright light in Austria's protest against the Nazi regime, a brilliant footballer whose spoken demeanor would tragically lead to his demise. The famous death has added to the legend of Matthias Schindler, and he is celebrated today as not only a great footballer, but a fantastic person.